Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Gate with Scott and Kate. This is Kate. Tonight, um, I have a special guest, but before we get into talking to our special guests, I would like to thank our sponsor um, for the next couple episodes. Uh, we have American History, owned by Patrick Hill. So thank you, Patrick, for sponsoring Behind the Gate um, episodes. Tonight, we have a wonderful driver and she's well known in the Maritimes. She's one of our local female drivers here in Truro. So welcome aboard Tammy for joining me tonight on Behind the Gate with Scott and Kate. Thank you very much. So, Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah well thanks for you jumping on. I know we've had to reschedule a couple times but we got you on and let's dive into some things. I had no voice for two weeks. Everybody was happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everyone would be happy if mine was gone. So I totally get it. <laughs> so for some people that don't know who you are or, you know, know much about you, how did you kind of get into harness racing? Because it's in your blood. Well, I guess I can uh, blame dad for that one. It's all his fault. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dad started racing when he was 12 I guess so that's 68 years coming up this January for dad and I was um born in 71 so I've been with dad in the barn ever since I was little and uh I guess we spent a lot of time in the barn a lot of time in high school I was in the barn um we had 32 horses and when I was in grades 10 11 and 12 we had three burns so I was in the barn before school after school at nights, most times till 11, 12 at night. And mom would actually make supper for us. We never ever ate supper at a five or six o'clock. That didn't make sense for us. So mom would make supper anywhere between 10 and midnight. So I guess that's all what we have to do is live in the barn. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, as you know, growing up in the industry and being hands-on, um, What's been like the most exciting thing kind of as a driver and how'd you, you know, get into driving? Like what sparked that besides your father? Cause he's been a driver. Is there any other, you know, spark to make you want to drive? Um, well, dad and I trained horses together quite a bit. He actually taught me how to read a watch. And then when we trained the younger horses and the babies, I was always, you know, taught that I can't beat dad, can't go ahead of dad. We got to finish together. We got to be head to head, nose to nose, or, you know, I wouldn't want anybody getting angry. So uh, we started, you know, I was training before like 16, 15 years old. I remember when I was actually 11 years old, I went my first training mile with a mare named Calatar. She raced at Sackville Down. She had a world mile, a uh, half mile world record. I think it lasted 48 hours. <laughs> it's all lasted, but. <laughs> Anyways, he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for a short period of time. And then I got to train with her, and I thought that was pretty exciting. I was always telling Dad, go faster, go faster. I was sitting between his legs, and I had the reins, and obviously he had the reins too, but I thought I was the one doing all the driving. And I guess from there on in, I just had the urge. I liked it. I It was, um, I want to go faster, and I guess I was the competition part of it was fun. I'm still competitive today, so... I guess that's where it all stemmed from, I guess. So we can blame that on dad too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, what has been the most exciting win that you have under your belt? Well, I do have a funny story about an exciting win, which I thought was a win, but really wasn't a win. I have, okay. two, I have two stories for you. One, some people would remember this. I drove a horse one time called Churchill Prince. And I know Redmond Doucette would probably have a chuckle at this if he hears this podcast, because this was a 4,000 claimer and this horse could leave a hundred, but he couldn't finish very good. So anyways, I decided that I would go for a drive on Churchill Pin Prince. Dad had to score him down because sometimes they said he would get, he'd get away on you. And I remember this time, but Jody Jameson was there too. <laughs> it was all home week one year. And Jody with dad were in the paddock and I was getting all kinds of instructions and tips and, you know, don't go inside the pylon the first turns. He'll cross over quickly. And but anyways, I remember I went to the quarter in 27 and a piece to half and 56, my fastest. And it was like, oh, that was exhilarating. I was so excited. But 
But then all of a sudden, oh, I, I don't know how many lengths I was out front at the three quarter pole, maybe 25 at least. I have the video downstairs and I'm actually Vance Cameron when I'm actually watching it because I can rehearse every single word of that race. And down the walk, down the walk through the lane, I thought I had the race won. You can actually hear my mother screaming and hollering from the grandstand because she actually, she thought I won. I even did the victory salute with like the whip up in the air and Redmond Deuce at friggin' well beat me right at the wire. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> like, we went in 201 in a piece, last half in five. So we weren't going real fast the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> but my most exciting actual win, I'd have to say, I don't know. Every win's exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always fun to win. I guess you get the you get the same feeling every time. I asked Wally Hennessy one time about winning races because Wally and I are pretty good friends, and I told him one time about winning a race at the in Newfoundland uh, at Goulds and the Ladies Drivers Challenge. And I said, Wally, I actually won a race in Newfoundland. He said, and he goes, How was that? And I said, Well, I went two oh six and three. And Wally goes, when you hit the wire, did you actually think about the time? And I said, no, not one bit. I didn't think about the time at all. He goes, that's what winning's all about. He goes, there's no pill in the world that you could take that would give you a better feeling than when you hit the wire first over somebody else. So, but, so that was, that was exciting, even though it was only slow, but it was a ladies driver's challenge. But Kill Karen Fury, I guess, back um, when I was 19, my first day I had my license. Fury was pretty special horse to us. And Dad um, put me on him my first day with my license, and I had a win with Fiori. So I was that was in 1987. Uh, Fiori was two then. So, and we had Kilcarran Fiori for a walk and Piers, and had his horses for like 26 years. So that was my most exciting win because it was the first day with my license. Oh, awesome! That's exciting. I love it. Yes. So you have a couple horses in your stable right now. Um. One I I've loved since he was in the stake races. Um, I remember I took a picture of him and Adam on the back stretch when Adam had him driving him, and what a gait this horse has. And I'm talking about Brumby, like he <laughs> is he is the most stunning animal I have seen. Well, Handsome. Thank you from, thank you from Brumby. <laughs> So uh, what enticed you to get from me? Well, I have to say Tom Hall's had a part in this. Tom would like me mentioning his name here. I was looking for a horse for over a year or so. Like, you know, I had Water Deep Dragon. I had Winter Panic. I had, you know, a few horses. But um, I kind of wanted one on my own. And I wanted one that was a little bit better than the previous ones I had. Because, you know, with the times and horses are going a lot faster than they were years ago. So... Tom Hollis actually told me to um, take a look at Bromby and he was on OnGate and I actually was the underbidder on OnGate and Dad said, well, you better stop bidding. You got to ship from the States to Toronto, Toronto to the PEI. So you might as well just wait and see if somebody gets him and you might be able to get him when he comes to the Maritimes if he comes here. So Tom told me, yes, he's actually on OnGate and when I bid, didn't get him. And then I waited for him to come to PEI and he was in the claim for the first start it was last July. So I've had him about a year and I claimed him in Summerside, the first start he was in. And I was pretty excited. I was the only one to have a claim on him. And Colin Johnson actually told me that I had the best claim in PEI. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's done good for you since you've got him. He's, yeah. you know, shown a lot and especially the past couple starts that he's been in, he's, like he's tough like he's been and he's racing against tough horses so it's nice to see him you know move up that ladder because he was a tough stake horse as it was so yes uh darlene mcmillan and graham uh, they had him when jamie smith had him in pei when he was in his stake races and they follow him uh, pretty closely and darlene talks to me every week about brumby because they love brumby and and then belinda uh she also was the breeder of Brumby, and Brumby was actually a surrogate. Um, oh, he, wow. the, yeah, Brumby's mother died at birth, so he had to be raised off of no, another mare. So um, Belinda tells me if anything ever happens to Brumby, Brumby has a home for life that she'd like to have him back if anything were ever, ever happened to him. So I told her no problem. I'll make sure that happens. But anyways, no, Brumby's been good. He's He paced a couple quick miles already this summer, 53 and 4 and 54 and 1. 
Um, he was second to Roland by a couple lengths now. I know that's all Mark had to, <laughs> had to go with Roland that day. <laughs> I can say I was two lengths behind Roland, but if Mark really wanted to go with Roland, probably would have won by 10. But <laughs> I was still excited that, you know, Brumby was in with Roland and, you know, he, he did okay. And he just raced in Summerside uh, Tuesday night, two nights ago. He raced good. He got a two-hole trip. Darren Crow drove him and they went in 55 and two and he paced in 55 and three at the fastest last quarter in the race. And it was only about 27 degrees there. We near died in the heat. So for yeah, the weather exactly. and the temperatures, he raced good. I was, I was happy with him again. So no, he gives it all every start and I'm enjoying him and I'm, I'm, I'm liking his progress so far. That's awesome. Another horse you guys have, and you've had him for a couple of years now. Um, Everybody knows this horse, <laughs> and it's your father's favorite horse as oh. it is. <laughs> Farm yeah. favorite, uh, Johnny Walker Deluxe. How is he coming along, and is he, you know, making progress this year? Well, Johnny is making progress this year. Um, we had what almost twenty some wins with Johnny in uh, the two seasons we had him. He was horse of the year here in Truro one year, and um. Johnny was when he behaves himself he can he has a lot of speed <laughs> he can go like hell really but in all honesty he had a little foot problem last year so that could have been the reason why he was jumping a few times and it wasn't right so we we um his foot's much better now and he's he's trained already a couple quick miles um Douglas Conrad actually trained him I think Doug we just told Doug to hang on and fasten your seatbelt <laughs> So Doug's gone his few miles with him in his fastest miles of his life, but he's supposed to qualify tomorrow night. Um, if he behaves himself. Uh, sometimes when Johnny gets in with other horses in the starting gate, he's a little bit hyper and, you know, he has to wear a hood and we have to wear McCarran in him sometimes because he's quite a handful. But um, if he puts his brain with his four legs and they cooperate together, then things will go well. But if you see him make a break, well, then you know that his legs and his, and his brain are not their friendship's going to turn to something, but anyways, <laughs> we'll see how he makes out, but let's, uh, hopefully he qualifies because we've had him for a little bit. Paul, um, Paul Smith owns him with dad. Paul's a fisherman of Wallace. So Paul and dad have had a lot of patience with Johnny, but I don't think we'd trade him in. He's torturous in the burn and he doesn't stop and he'd eat 30 pounds of apples a week if we let him and you bring out an apple and he bangs the door and he's, annoying all the time he doesn't like noise he hates the lawnmower whippersnipper we got to move him <laughs> around in the barn when the guy mows the lawn because johnny's just johnny but we like him and hopefully he qualifies tomorrow if not we'll have to try him again <laughs> that's all you can do exactly that's awesome i'm so i'm excited to see him race this year i hopefully he makes it on friday and um i look forward to seeing him out on the track thank you uh, what so as a female driver, there's only three of you guys in Nova Scotia. It was used to be the two of you. Um, and now we have added on Monica Sutherland, which is awesome to see because we don't have that many in general in the Maritimes, as we only have four. So what is it like to be one of those, um, you know, three female drivers in Nova Scotia, but one of the four in the Maritimes? Well, I think it's quite special. I know that in harness racing uh, right across Canada, like for drivers, actually, it's a male-dominated sport. But, um, you know, we have all kinds of trainers and drivers and grooms and owners who are female. And in all honesty, it does take a little bit of guts to go behind the gate and race. You know that there's uh, some tense situations. There's some close calls. Your reaction times have to be good. You have to be on your game. Sometimes you need a little strength. You know, especially if you have, to have Johnny, you got to have a little bit of strength for Johnny. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, and again, you have to have the experience and a little bit of talent with it. So I think um, just for someone to just hop on and want to go drive, I don't think it'd be that easy for them to do. So I think having the years of experience that, you know, I've had and the other girls have had as well, I think that goes a long way. Um, but the best part is when the girls beat the guys, right? You know, you get in the race and there's nobody, there's nobody like Claire and I, we just love to beat that Danny Romo fully, you know, if we think that's great. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, it's um, it's pretty special. It's fun. I haven't been driving very much since my mom passed. I didn't have a horse for a little bit, but I'm getting back into it. I'll probably get another horse too here eventually. 
retirement's awesome. coming too so i'll probably just do horses after that so i may have five or six by then you never know <laughs> exactly you don't know the future until you have to get do, to I'll, it I'll have to, I'll have to do something <laughs> exactly you can't just sit around exactly um so back i remember back in the day i was in high school when this uh, when the dr female driver challenge happened here in Truro uh, and I can't even remember the name of the series that we always had here um, Robert Williams that's it yes yeah. that's it I remember that challenge like as if it was yesterday because I just started getting into harness racing at that time and I was helping Robert Phillips and he had the stock that everybody was like you're in with Robert yeah, you just there's not much you're gonna get out of this race but you're gonna have fun with it and I remember he had um two times a lady and big big mare and she just didn't have a whole lot of go to her she was just one of those barn faves and um I remember she won and I was so excited because I was like, we're never going to get another win out of this mayor ever again. And it was just that pink cooler, that memory that lasts forever. Like, what does it mean to have those fe like only female driver challenges? Well, actually, I they're pretty special. Um, I know when Ann Karen um, Larson from Norway uh, actually invited us over there. We went over to Norway and compete it. We went to a lot of tracks in Canada and the States and the Mildred Williams Ladies Drivers Challenge. Claire and I, uh, Katie Miller, um, she's in Ontario now. I know my, in one of the Ladies Drivers Challenges, Katie didn't have her license yet and I drove one for uh, Katie and her father and Shelby. And I remember Shelby saying to me, if you can hang on to this, this one in the first turn, you're a winner. And I said, I'll hang on to that one in the first turn. I'll guarantee it. <laughs> anyway, and then we end up winning and Katie hopped on the bike and he had her picture taken with me. So she was saying, this is my first win. My first win as an owner. She was all excited. So, you know, you have memories that you make along the way with people in these driver's challenges and you meet a lot of people. I think um, there was a thing on Facebook about how many tracks that you raced at and you had to list all the tracks that you raced at, at raced at, sorry, and you had to list one that you didn't. And then people had to guess which track you didn't race at. So I started making a list. I've actually raced at 21 racetracks wow. in Canada and the States, you know, for, I don't have, I don't have 900 drives lifetime yet. You know, some guys have a thousand wins a year, but you know, I don't drive like everybody else does. I'm no, I'm no James McDonald or, you know, Dave Miller or Corey Callahan or <laughs> Aaron Mary. I'm a, but you know, every now and then we get a win and it's exciting, which maybe two or three per year if I race, but, <laughs> but you know, uh, the ladies drivers challenge were pretty special. And I just to speak again uh, about Mildred Williams. Uh, there was one time that we went to Montreal, we raced at Hippodrome Montreal. We had to drive a trotter. I couldn't even get up on the bike because I'm so short. The bike was that was like six inches above my hips. I think someone had to like boost me up to get on to drive this big trotter. And then I couldn't reach the stirrups. I had to sit on the crossbar. But I drove like that. It was not an exciting drive, but I guess I didn't realize I was on a five eighths and not a half mile and kind of moved a little bit too early. But those things happen. But Mildred Williams herself, we picked her up and she came with um Ann Karen Larson and myself. Who else was there? Was Kelly Case? And um, Ann Curran from Smith Falls in Ottawa and Mildred and I sat in the back seat and we had a nice little conversation. She was almost 90 then, poor wow. little lady. She was, oh, and then I took her by the arm and then she and I went into the track before we started to race and we went in, took her for a burger and a coffee and introduced her to a few people. And she was, you know, it was, it was pretty awesome really because, you know, she was the first lady in harness racing. So we got to experience that with her, you know, before she passed. So that was pretty nice. That's awesome. I love that. Um, do you think we need more events like this within the Maritimes or even Canada? Well, it would be nice if they would. I know that's faded off a little bit lately. I know now with Harness the Hope is picking up again. It's, you know, it allows for us to have a few drives at, you know, at tracks in Charlottetown and here in Truro. 
Um, it would be nice if we could do it all over again. But then again, you know, there's some challenges that come with that. Not everybody wants the females driving their horses sometimes um, for various reasons. And some don't enter their horses and don't want to see us drive them. Um, but, you know, I, I think we're just as careful as the rest of them most times. And it would be nice if we could have. But, you know, it's, it's nice that we're doing that. They're giving us a few drives anyway. And we're not excluded. So exactly. we're, thank, we're thankful for what they've done for us. That's awesome. Um, so who has been, I know I could probably take a guess at this. Who has been your biggest cheerleader on the track? Well, now I'd have to say, I'd probably say both my parents. Mom always loved to get her picture taken and her high heel shoes and always dressed <laughs> up in the fancy dresses in the bling and holding the purse under the arm and going to the winter circle. I remember mom doing that quite often, but so mom, mom always liked when I, when I won and watched me race, but uh, dad actually, I think dad liked, liked um, seeing me drive and being successful and taught me a lot along the way and giving me a few lessons at the same time when I've raced against them. Uh, but, you know, I think um, I can be thankful for, I guess, their support and continued support today. Awesome. Um, where we don't have a whole lot of female drivers in the industry, is there things that you think that we could do to get those females, you know, behind the gate or out training in Really, they're the behind the scene females. They are the grooms of the barns. Yeah. Well, I think what they're doing right now, like trying to get the younger generation involved with the mini horses, I think that's an excellent way, you know, an excellent thing to do. Um, it brings a lot of people to the racetracks, you know, all their families and friends and other kids get involved. So I think, you know, that's a great incentive to bring those kids out. And I don't know, it's if unless they're involved with harness racing and they have families involved or friends and the kids come to the track, then we don't often get as many as we'd like, you know, because, you know, we're not replacing the older generation quick enough. We're losing a lot right. of the older generation and, you know, how do we replace them? So having things like this at the tracks to encourage the young kids to come in and, you know, take tours of the burn and, you know, get involved in family days and, you know, as much as the tracks can do to help them. And what you guys do is a great thing. And I know they're going to North Sydney this Saturday and the kids will have a great time. So, you know, like your daughter's in that. And I see Liam Myers is going. I know Adam Murner's son, Melissa Rennie's son's going, Jackson. And, you know, uh, Mike McGuigan's boys, uh, they all enjoy doing it. So, and uh, Leah, I think, you know, they love it. So, and other kids can see that these kids are loving that. And let's hope that that encourages them to want to get involved too. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So... We have to ask, we've asked most of our drivers this question. Um, with you all out on the track and being so competitive, <laughs> and we know who, we know you, Tammy, we know that you like to pick and prob at people and have some fun with them. Um, is there one that you really like to have fun with out on the track? Well, I do have um, a story about this one guy, this Danny Romo fella. I do like picking on Danny a little bit and he likes to pick on me. So it's kind of funny, but I will tell my quick story. I didn't, I think when I was the MC at the banquet one year, I actually told this story about the younger generation and starting out and what you can do. But I had a qualifying drive. You, know, you, need, you need so many qualifying drives to get your license. So Gary McDonald gave me this mare to drive. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but there were nine of us on the gate and I had the nine hole. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is nice now. I, I got to make sure I don't run over the two horse, the one and the two horse in front of me because there's eight on the gate. And dad was in this qualifier. Henry Smallwood had the rail and Danny Romo had the two hole. <laughs> and so when I went to get the bike from the paddock, I got in the bike and they were going up to shoot. I couldn't reach the hand holders. And I'm like, well, Jesus, Gary McDonald set these hand holders for me. Like, he must know what he's doing. Like, he's been in the business his whole life, too. So. Anyways, but I still couldn't reach them in post parade. And I'm like, okay, this is not good if I can't reach the handles. I'm going to bring this mare back in and I'm going to put the hand holders back. Well, Lord love a duck. I put the hand holders back and I went to the gate. 
And as the gate started to roll around the turn by our burn here, the mayor started to hook on pretty good. Well, all of a sudden, my hand holders were back, maybe somewhere by my lap. And then all of a sudden, when the gate straightened out around the turn, there were nine of us on the gate because my mayor drove right in between Henry Smallwood and Danny Romo. Well, Henry Smallwood, he was kind of voted. And Henry said, <laughs> Henry said, where are you going, Tammy? <laughs> and, well, I don't. On this podcast, I can't really tell you what Danny Romo said, but it was really fast words, and he was basically, what are you doing, Tammy? What are you doing, Tammy? What are you doing up here? And anyways, we had to have a recall in the qualifier, and I had to go back into the paddock, and Gary put my hand holders back where they were supposed to be, and I should have left them. <laughs> anyways, I guess that was lesson number one. So I guess T's and Gary, and then when the great when the gate did leave, I left somehow, the one horse left out pretty good and I was in the two hole and then I popped out and dad was in the race too. And then I know dad didn't give me a hole. And I said, you didn't even give me a hole. He said, well, then you shouldn't have been out there. He said, so dad closed the hole on me. So I got two <laughs> good lessons real quick. So my dad taught me one and Gary McDonald taught me one, but Danny was funny though, te teasing me like, what are you doing? I said, well, I don't know. I'm just starting out, man. This is what it's all about. <laughs> but it was kind of funny actually. That's yeah. awesome. Oh my, I can see it plain as day. <laughs> Danny saying it. Oh my dear. Because oh, that's, yes. that's Danny for you. He was the total opposite of Henry. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see Henry just being right, just laid back and being like, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> where are you going, Tammy? And Danny, what are you doing? You're in my position. What are you doing? <laughs> oh God. That's so funny. Oh my God. Um, so recently you've gone to the big North America cup race yes. and yes. tell us how it was. Like, is it the same atmosphere that you would get at gold cup and saucer or is it kind of a whole different world? Well, it is a bit of a whole different world, really. You know, um, you get to see a lot of people you haven't seen for a long time. A lot of Maritimers are up there and they're doing quite well actually. So, you have to give credit to the boys from the Maritimes. I think I even posted on my Facebook after Anthony Beaton won the North America Cup and Herb Holland's horse was second with Jody driving that one. I was like, geez, don't 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 sell the Maritimers short. But Puffer, Chris Gillis, corrected me and said, now those were Cape Bretoners, Tammy. In other words, not Nova Scotia. But oh, geez. Said, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that was kind of funny too. But, you know, I got to actually talk to Anthony Beaton the day before we were in the paddock because we had a couple of our horses that dad uh, trained here, um, Sterling Choice and Groove and Will, they were in the actual um, qualifiers. So Anthony was there and we talked quite a bit and I wished him luck in the big race and told him that he had a good shot at winning and he thought he did too, but he just didn't know how things would go in the race. And, you know, with 10 horse field, you have to get a good trip, but it's fast pace up there. That's for sure. Like everybody's rolling. You're going everywhere. Like I was tired out when I come back for two days, but I don't know how those guys do it all the time, but it's fast paced. It's busy. It's always nice to see what, you know, their horses go a little bit faster up there than here. So that's kind of fun to see. And, uh, but you said to compare to the gold cup, I have to be honest. I know the North America cup went for a million dollars and now the gold cup goes for a hundred thousand, but I have to be honest. I think the gold cup and saucers still my favorite choice. I know dad won it in 1992. It was the only year I ever missed the gold cup and saucer. Oh, wow. Uh, all the years <laughs> I made it every single year to watch that race. And the year dad won it, I was in Edmonton, Alberta playing softball or fastball for team Nova Scotia. And I got an all Canadian award and had to stay to get the award. And I was kind of really depressed and down the dumps and dad ended up winning the race and I missed it. But I've liked the gold cup and saucer since I was little. Um, I enjoy it. The, Charlottetown, Red Shores, they do a superb job. I know that there are a number of pe people in Ontario who like to bring their horses down but haven't done so yet. I'm just, I just want to say that if they haven't done done it yet, they don't know what they're missing. Yeah. I mean, like from the Gold Cup and Saucer Girls to the Island Hymn to the cars coming on the track to the lights going out and the spotlight and the, we might as well add the social events that take place afterwards and the burns and the barbecues and the corn boils and you know, yep. I think it's amazing. It's it's something to actually see and that people, if they've never been there before, I think they're missing out big time. But oh, it's yeah. nice to go to the North America Cup, too, to experience those things, a little brown jug and 
those races as well. So, but I'm not going to throw the gold cup and saucer under the bus. It's my first choice. <laughs> I hear you. As you were talking about it, I was getting goosebumps thinking, oh, August can't come fast enough for the Gold Cup. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this year should be fun for the Gold Cup week because um, for the mini ponies, we actually are doing a Wednesday race card for them. So they actually get to have their races before the actual race card happens. So oh, those nice. kids get to experience what, you know, Gold Cup week is kind of like, so... Yes, awesome. Oh, that's going to be exciting as well. So to wrap this up, if you could go to one track in the world, um, where would you go and why? Well, like I mentioned, I have been to a lot of racetracks in the Ladies Drivers Challenge with, you know, and then Claire McDonald was with us lots of places. And we've liked a lot of those tracks. I really like Chester. I liked uh, racing in Chester in Philadelphia. That was pretty cool because... When you go, when you leave off the gate and um, the first turn, I guess well, you're you're on the five eight mile track, but when you come around the, by the grandstand and go into the turn, you're actually going over a bridge, which is kind of neat, and you can see the highway that's right cool. there, so that's kind of neat. And uh, I liked that track. I had to use Danielle Dubé's bike because he had the shortest legs of anybody there, so I had to use <laughs> his bike. But um, I have never raced at the Meadowlands. I think that would be pretty cool, and I have to give um. I guess a little bit of a, a nudge to Stacy Kyoto, who still drives and she drives down there. And Stacy and I were actually roommates in Norway and had a lot of laughs and good times. But Stacy does quite well. She she drives with, you know, Brian Sears and Corey Callahan and Dave Miller and she drives with all the, the good guys down there. And so she and she holds her own. So I That's think awesome. the Meadowlands would be good. And I know I didn't mention Claire when you had asked your question earlier about females in the sport and the industry, just to give give Claire her a little bit of oomph there. <laughs> Claire's one of those women who who does it all. Claire's her own blacksmith. Claire drives, trains, grooms, and she does all her own shoeing. Like not many females do their no. own shoeing too. And she has like what, 18, 20 horses, and you know, she holds her own on the racetrack and She's had some pretty successful horses and Mappo's Lion and she's had some for Tom Hollis and Moore and Fonsi and Fran and Mappo's Lion with Jamie or Jamie Campbell. You know, that horse is a really nice horse too. So like, you know, you have to give credit to Claire for what she does. I know a lot of the boys sometimes don't like Claire and she's in stake races and they, <laughs> they've had a few battles, but you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. I think she does a phenomenal job and she has dominated the stake races uh, numerous times so I give uh lots of praise to Claire and respect Claire highly yes absolutely wonderful is there anything else that we should be chatting about well no I I don't think I have anything else to say I had lots of um I guess good um connections in harness racing over the years I know that I mentioned Wally Hennessy because I usually hear from Wally every <laughs> week or two and his buddy Mark Beckwith but um, I guess, you know, you asked about your biggest fans besides my mother and father. Uh, uh, Jill's Barrio is another one who comes to mind. Jill's has been a good friend of ours and his wife, Kelly, over the years. And Jill's has driven the love of my life, Brumby, a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jill's had a win with Brumby and, and so did Mark Campbell, you know, and it's uh, it's not difficult to respect those guys on the racetrack with their talent and their abilities. If only I could be half as good as they were you know they hear my name more often but that's probably not <laughs> gonna happen <laughs> but no besides that I, I do appreciate you inviting me to the podcast and I want to thank you very much for having me no problem thank you for joining me and it's nice to be able to sit down and chat with all the drivers and trainers and grooms that we've had on just to get you know the human side of you guys because really we see you on the track or we see you out training and it's not all the time that we get to kind of dive into your life and you know your experiences and your thoughts so it's really nice to actually sit and chat and you know have those one-on-one -on -one conversations so I really do thank you for jumping on and it's been a pleasure that's for sure even yeah, though I I have, I have to yeah. say one more thing I do have to thank my brother for being the major sponsor for the um up-and-coming ladies drivers challenge yes. 
on July 21st. He sponsored the event along with Dwayne and Renee LeBlanc from Grattan Helmets, who are giving a helmet to the winner. So oh, I awesome. want to thank those. So sponsorships go a long way. So thanks very much to my brother, Ozzy and Achieve Financial and uh, Dwayne and Renee LeBlanc. That's very kind for them to do. So thank them very much for that. That's awesome. And, and it's so nice to see, you know, people within the harness racing family, but, you know, businesses and everything getting involved in these challenges because, you know, if it wasn't for the sponsors, half the time these events don't happen. So exactly. I, I love it. But yes, thank you, Tammy, for joining me on Behind the Gate with Scott and Kate. And again, thank you to our sponsor, American History, owned by Patrick Hill. So again, we have a couple more episodes to go through. Bob McClure is going to join his best friend, Justin Turnbull and Scott in a podcast. So stay tuned for that. That should be up and coming. It will be a funny conversation, I'm sure, with those three boys. Um, and we have a couple more like Nick Oaks. He's willing to jump on and have some deep conversations about everything as well. So thank you, Tammy, for joining us. Wish we would have had your dad on with you, but hey, <laughs> it's okay. No worries. We'll hit He's him up another door. time. <laughs> He's next door waiting for me to barbecue his steak. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I won't hold you any longer and he can get his steak. So thank you, Tammy. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And best of luck to Aaliyah on Saturday in the when she goes down to drive the minis. Yes, yeah, she's, uh, she's excited. She's nervous, but... She uh, she's hoping this time around her and Dapper Dan can make a comeback. <laughs> Dapper Dan's a little bit like Johnny Walker to luck. <laughs> right. Yes. He had one of those little, you know, flags and head didn't click moments. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sam. And uh, we will see you on the track. Okay. Thanks, Caitlin. And to Scott as well. Take care. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.